what's going on YouTube? Warstorm here, coming at you guys with another a top five series today. I know a lot I've done these in the past, um, but I really like doing these series. But today I actually wanted to do, to do more Arc Five related topics because I really enjoy it. Um, so as you know, I've done I've done videos why you should watch Arc Five. Um, Arc Five actually hit its 101st episode um, last week. So, um, I ha the reason I haven't popped toast of an anime review yet is because I think they're delaying the episode, so it'll probably be going up next week. But to celebrate the 100th episode of Arc 5, I thought I'd do a top 5 series where I did the top 5 duels from the anime. Um, I will admit, like, I've watched the entire, well, well, I have watched the entire series. A lot of the earlier portions of the series were not as fresh in my mind, so I had to go back and watch some portions. However, um, especially the first one I'm going to talk about, um, um, number five, it was really surprising like, how I was like, wow, it's been a long time. So the first duel I wanted to talk about, and a lot of these are parts of rematches or like rivalries that are created in the series, and you'll kind of see that theme throughout this. Um, so the first one I want to do is, this is actually, in, I believe, episode 29, which is Yuzu versus Masami. Now, the first time um, Yu Yuzu and Masami uh, dueled each other, it was when um, the, the LDS school came in and was trying to take over the Yuzu duel school. Yuya won his match against the Constellar player. I can't even remember his name off the top of my head, because he, he gets carded pretty later, you know, spoiler alert. But, um... um Yuzu and Masami duel, duel the first time, and Masami beats her pretty easily, like... And and she she got beat beat up pretty badly, and she and so much like a lot of the other portions of Arc Five, you see characters grow stronger because of defeat. And Yuzu goes to train with Fusion, Tadi's fusions with Sora. So we see that obviously. So when um, in the first turn of this duel, um, duel, um, you know, Masami of course has to in, insult Yuzu a little bit because you know that's just how she kind of gets a quick. Anger, but anyway, so Masami, t so they they're in this kind of stairway arena this time around with a solid vision. So you know, one fall could cost you the every the whole duel. So Yuzu and Masami are start when they start their duel. Of uh, Masami, of course, starts off strong. She fusion uses Gem Knight fusion to fuse for three with three of her monsters and summon a or I believe mean, it's the 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 one one she used in the first duel to defeat her, which is uh, Master Dia, the male one, and. And then she sets a card and passes her turn. So now she has no cards in hand. This kind of comes key the next turn, um, her next turn. When um, so Yuzu cut turn comes around, she fusion summons Ho Shoberta. Shoberta is the first fusion monster we see Yuzu use. She doesn't use it very often, but she did use it this time around. So uh, she uses Shoberta's effect. If you guys have been following the, the, the melodious archetype, you understand that Shoberta banishes monsters. Can banish monsters in the anime. It banishes cards used for a fusion summon. So. What Yuzu does is, not only does she banish the three materials, she also banishes the Gemini fusion with Shoberta's effect. And then Shoberta gains attack equal to the number of monsters, which gets her over the monster. Sora makes the point that Gemini fusion, one of the things that makes it so good, is the fact that you can banish a Gemini monster, add it back, and fuse again. Not only has she gotten rid of all the fusion materials, but she's also gotten rid of the fusion spell that, you know, around the archetype. So... So, Vasumi proceeds to take some damage, however, she taught Kors, she taught Dex, you know, everyone's favorite generic card, Brilliant Fusion. And the thing about action cards is they're counted as spell cards, so if you guys know a Brilliant Fusion works, you pitch a car spell card and it pumps the monster up to its actual attack points. Um, she uses Brilliant Fusion to summon a monster, pitches an action card, and runs over Shoberta, and, um... From there, I think, from there, as she did have, she puts another fusion monster on, on the following turn, uh, Yuzu just sets a card and sets a couple cards past his turn. So then, from there, Yuzu actually, uh, from there, uh, Masumi proceeds to use Brilliant Fusion again. To f she uses a f some kind of weird combination with her Crystal Rose card and another card to fusion summon. So Yuzu proceeds to summon a second monster, and then attacks a... Uh, Yuzu's face down, and then on, and then attacks directly. Then Yuzu activates a card that allows her to summon a fusion monster from the graveyard, an opponent's graveyard that cannot be destroyed by battle. It happens to be the Crystal Rose Masami just used. So she takes a lot of damage, but from there she actually uh, proceeds to use Crystal Rose, another Melody, and a uh, one of the newer Melodious cards where it can actually it's like a poly, like a lot of you know, this is kind of something I've actually liked a lot about Arc Five is they introduce new ways to fuse. They have monster effects that allows you to fuse, and that's what this new monster does. So she uses Crystal Rose to copy one of her most archer monsters and then goes for Bloom Diva. Then Bloom Diva attacks over one of her monsters and uh, she changed. Uh, 
Masumi tries to chain a brilliant spark, but Yuzu chains Melodious Illusion, and from there, uh, Yuzu manages to acrobatically grab the action card before Masumi can grab it. Then uh, she wins the duel and, and also grabs Masumi in the process. At the end of the episode, you see Masumi actually gives her Crystal Rose to add to her arsenal, and we see Crystal Rose throughout the next few duels she has. Overall, it was a very solid duel. Um, I gave it a pretty solid number five slot. I felt like um, it's definitely not as good as these other four duels, but it definitely really stood out in the list. Now we come to number four, which is um, something from the Synchro arc. Now, one thing I'll, I will say about the Synchro arc, it did have some good duels, but it was also incredibly slow. I felt like they really went a little too slow with it. But this duel kind of really stood out. So the first round went, and the last duel of the first round was Shun versus Dennis. This is actually the second time they dueled. They dueled in the underground, and we never got to see the, it finish, um, fortunately. But from there, Shun is already, Shun is, you know, questions everything. You know, he's smart enough to see through. Because when the first time we do see Dennis, Dennis just literally shows up out of nowhere, and something just seems a little off about him. You know, it's obvious. It's not obvious he's from the fusion dimension, but he just pops up out of nowhere during the battle royale. It was obviously he he came in with the original, and later on we find out he knows Yuri really well, and we find out that he's from the fusion dimension, which it, I felt like something was off because he just shows up out of nowhere and saves Yuya for no reason. So when they're dueling, in, when Shun and Dennis are dueling in the underground, it became really, Shun was starting to question how he doesn't, he feels like these skills are not, are from actual combat, which is true. So, on, so on, the, on Shun's first turn, he opens up almost identical to how he did in the underground match. He opens with Devil Eagle, burns uh, Dennis for some life points, and then uh, sets a Frank couple cards and passes turn. So from there, Dennis actually proceeds to, uh, you know, do a bunch of pendulum-related stuff. He goes into his, you know, his key monster, which is Poor Mage Hat Tricker. Then he pendulum summons three level fives and summons a Shadow Maker, which Shadow Maker is an anime-exclusive card. It recovers three level fives. I think its effect is when it's targeted for a card effect, you can summon another one from your extra deck. It's sort of similar to Goyo Defender in that regard. And he kind of uses these shenanigans to change with them. So... By the end of his turn, he has a a hat tricker, a uh, his uh, trapeze magician, his ace monster, and three uh, shadow makers, two of which can attack twice. So she puts Shun in a bit of a pickle. So from there, Shun actually um, from there he does his skull eagle does is or devil eagle whatever it's called the rank three that no one uses gets run over. He activates doom double force to rank it up into revolution falcon. From there, he uses Revolution Falcon's effect to kill to kill his opponent to try to blow up Trapeze Magician, but he uses an effect, uh, Dennis uses one of his pendulum effects, I believe, to protect it. And from there, I think it becomes Shun's turn, so he detaches material so he can attack all of his monsters. And he does manage to get all of Dennis's monsters off the field, unfortunately for him. Um, and when he when we came his and during the beginning of this a few turns before he act, uh, Dennis actually drew his fusion card like sec second turn, which kind of made things a little awkward. Like it's like he seems Dennis always seems to draw it at the wrong time, and um, so um, so what Shun does he activates a card that's called Raid Raptor Target Flag I believe. With Target Flag it's sort of like a kind of like a mind crush if you will. It, um, you can draw a card and then you reveal it to your opponent. He reveals last tricks and he's, and then you check your opponent's hand and destroy anything. When that monster you've targeted, opponent's monster targeted, leaves the field, you get to look at their hand and throw away anything that's similar, that same card as that. So, so he, when Shun finally gets rid of uh, Trape Trapeze's Magician, unfortunately for him, not only does Shun, he, he, fortunately for him, Shun, the Trapeze Magician gives him an action card that saves his butt. Which kind of like annoys me a little bit about Arc Five. Those some of the better duels, like the action cards, don't always save their butts, but it really, they really do. It's always funny to see them negated. But anyway, um, so from there, when Target Flag is destroyed, it reveals the fusion from his hand. It turns out, of course, Dennis is from the fusion dimension. You know, we've kind of known this for a while as the audience. So from there, he draws this card called, I believe it's called. Antique Gear Chaos Fusion, so the effect is he banishes Exceed Materials up to the number, 
of a monsters he needs to fusion summon, and then he uses those and he summons those monsters with their effects uh, negated, ignoring their summoning condition, then fuses with all of them. So he proceeds to drop four fusion monsters and then summon Antique Gear Chaos Giant, which is sort of a tower. So if you recall some of the flashbacks, that was the monster that was those were the monsters that the fusion dimension used to destroy the city. So obviously, you know, they weren't able to stop it in the she wasn't able to stop it in the past. When she, when he do, when um, Dennis does manage to summon the monster, um, he tr soon tries to activate traps cards to stop it. But unfortunately, the uh, chaos giant is unaffected by by spell and trap effects. And on top of that, when uh, it it negates Revolution Falcon's attack that reduces attack and defense to zero when it attacks it. And this is, I think, where Dennis really messed up, where he let his Chaos Giant just run rampant over the, the playing field, and this becomes relevant to, later in the duel. He literally lets his Chaos Giant just go everywhere and just smash everything, rather than just killing the monster. Um, which, I think that that becomes his undoing later on. So Shun manages to save himself from dying by summoning the last tricks that he revealed off the target flag, and then, um, you know, the, of course, I think your Chaos Giant can attack every monster, so it runs over, it just pokes the last tricks and gets it off the field. And then Shun's following turn, he top decks a Rank Up Magic Soul Shave Force, which obviously has become really popular among Raid Raptor players for good reason. It allows him to bring back his Revolution Falcon and make Satellite Cannon Falcon, which allows him to, re which, um, unfortunately for Dennis, uh, Antique Gear Chaos Giant isn't unaffected by monster effects, so Shun proceeds to use Satellite Cannon to Falcon's effect, to reduce it um, down by 800 for each Raid Raptor monster in his grave. And, and then one of the coolest scenes I think so far in the anime, we see Satellite Cannon Falcon going into the sky and just blowing the crap out of Antique Gear Chaos Giant and Dennis proceeds to lose. During this turn, he's trying. To, Dennis also is trying to grab action cards, but unfortunately, because his monster wrecked the, the playing field, he can't grab them. So it's like his own monster became his undoing. and. And then from there, Shun tries to, you know, car turn him into a card, but he finds out that his dual disc has been modified by Reggie. I'm assuming it was probably when uh, he had them insert the cards, probably tweaked everyone's dual disc. So he, he tries to punch Dennis, but the security pulls him away. So from there, the duel ends. And because of what it... After this, all of the other duels are on the, uh, in the, on the roads of uh, the... Uh, Synchro Dimension rather than the stadium because the stadium has been decimated by Chaos Giant. So that comes about to the end of that. Uh, so I think it's episode 78. I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't pinpoint a lot of these. But uh, so the, next, the number three episode on this list is um, Reggie versus Yuya part two. Now Reggie and Yuya have two duels. The first duel they have is a bit of a draw because it, it, Yuya technically won, but uh, it was mostly because Reggie didn't realize how this pendulums, prototype pendulums worked. So we don't see Reggie duel very often. I calculate it's about four duels throughout the series. We do see like brief little scenes, but like actual duels, I think we've had a total of four. And this was this duel was towards the end of an arc, and it's probably and it was really really hard for me to place this one this low, simply because it was it was really good. And um, so this we actually get to see some of Reggie's other cards that he has in this duel. So um, Yuya is obviously upset because of what happened to Michi, what happened to you know um, what happened to Michi and those guys. Uh, because they got turned into cards, uh, so he's blamed, and Yuzu's um, nowhere to be found. Of course, Reggie hasn't told him that he knows where she's gone. Um, so from there, so Yuya, I believe, I, I don't forget who made the first move. I think it was Reggie. Reggie makes the first move, and he does very similar to what he did in the first duel, where he opens up with Genghis and Alexander using fusion and synchro summoning, you know, something he used to really well, and then he makes, uh, what's it called, the level... Four one the rank four a wave king Caesar, and he makes all four of these going fir first I believe, and then from there I think uh, Yuya it becomes Yuya's turn so Yuya goes ahead and uh, just goes all out first he actually sets Yangsheng magician and form pal Trump witch in the pendulum zone and then proceeds to fusion summon for Runei pendulum dragon and uh, beast dies pendulum dragon he nearly gets the hit in but unfortunately for Yuya, uh, he gets a, 
you know, always Reggie always seems to have a trap card ready to go. And he Reggie basically is tells him that, you know, these type of emotions are fatal in an actual battle. Trying he's he's if, and then during this duel we see how far Reggie's willing to push someone. He pushes Yuya really far and Yuya pretty much pulls out all the stops. Um so from there you for I believe he uses the, those after the dragons you know have cleared Reggie failed to clear Reggie's field Reggie proceeds to use um I believe he summon he uses I believe he sets his pendulum scale and then pendulum summons his um uh abyss Ragnarok and then Ragnarok's effect kicks in and special summons his slime one of his slimes back and then he banishes one of the dragons and I forget how you're he actually, I think he destroyed the other one by battle, I believe. I don't remember the call right off the top of my head. But he wasn't, he wasn't, he, I think with, I think what he did was he fusion summoned, what the fusion monster does is uh, the uh, Kaiser Ragnarok, the big fusion, uh, Abyss Ragnarok that steals monsters. So um, from there, from there, Yuya's put in a very difficult position. So he proceeds to, um, he, I think from there, he actually uh, uses, he pendulum summons his Stargazer Magician and Form Falc Pendulum uh, Wizard, which are two monsters that, you know, uh, which was a monster that's become really more meta relevant. Um, so he uses Yang Shang's Magician's effect, not instead of, you know, using it to make Dark Rebellion, he actually uses it to turn his Stargazer level 4 so he can make Dark Rebellion exceed Dragon. Now he has both Odd Eyes and Dark Rebellion on the field. So he uses Dark Rebellion's uh, Dragon's effect targeting Abyss Ragnarok. Are targeting his Kaiser Ragnarok, I believe he got the Abyss Ragnarok off the field. From there, he uh, tries to attack, but unfortunately, Kaiser Ragnarok's effect kicks in, bouncing his, one of uh, Reggie's pendulum scales, and then he proceeds to do it, go through, make it go through anyway. <laughs> so basically, rather than you know getting him for game, he uh, steals Yuya's uh, Odd Eyes uh, Pendulum Dragon and reduces the damage. As always, Reggie has all the answers. So. On the following turn, we get to see one of Reggie's, probably one of the most powerful boss monsters in the game, a Yu-Gi-Oh! summon. Um, Cal so he, pre he proceeds to, Reggie proceeds to reset his scales and Pendulum summon the Abyss Ragnarok back and CEO Hell Armageddon. And then he overlays those two monsters for Kali Yuga. And Kali Yuga is, and the anime has an even more broken effect. So, Yuya has, I believe, this Wing of Mixed Direction card that he tries to use, but unfortunately gets negated. I believe I'm trying to remember how everything went through this duel. And then you see, and then, and this, and then on the fall, and then he uses, um, he proceeds to attack over Yuya's Dark Rebellion Exceed Dragon, which leaves Yuya in a pickle. So you, it becomes Yuya's turn, and he grabs a card, another card that Yuto, you know, mysteriously somehow ended up in Yuya's hands from Yuto, called Shuffle Reborn. He uses this card to bring back uh, Dark Rebellion Exceed Dragon, and then he, oh, and then he, and he, I believe he's Trump Witches off the field. So he uses um, Yang Shang and Yang Qi Magician to um, rank them up and to make Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. And he tries to swing Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon into, um, and I think he used Wings of Misdirection to try to lock Reggie out of his spell and trance. But Reggie proceeds to use Kali Yuga's effect to heavy storm the field and then reset everything that just got heavy and so wing of resurrection's effect is turned off so reggie uses his spells and traps to unfortunately destroy odd eyes rebellion dragon and that that's one of the things that's the most aggravating about how powerful this monster is is that it never actually kind of like the real game card game it never really gets a kill in very rarely does it win games and the duel ends there and of course, you know, Yuya spends a couple extra toads being salty. And the thing about this duel that I like the most is the fact you see the you see the main character not only lose, but lose convincingly. And you realize, you know, Reggie literally tells him after the duel, he said, I wouldn't even he's basically like, I haven't even tried wasn't even tried, really, and you still lost. So it it does make him better, but at the same time, you know, it puts him in a predicament. So, uh, and then number two on the list is a Jack versus Yuya part two. Now, much like a lot of these episodes, this was a rematch. Yuya and Jack dueled, I believe, in, uh, what was it? Yuya and Jack duel in the, uh, in the exhibition match where it's, but you, you kind of know already what's going to happen because you, you, you think, um, Yuya goes to something, it's like a sacrifice, basically. It's supposed to show how 
you know, how the king is so much better than everyone else and strive everyone in the tournament to be better. So from I think Yu Yu uses a similar move in Yu against Reggie, you know, um, Jack goes for Red Wyvern, which is Wyvern first turn, and then, you know, but all that. And in, in the end, Yuya ends up getting defeated pretty soundly, gets Scarlighted, and uh, monsters get Scarlighted and gets attacked directly for game. So in, in Duel 2, this was actually the, one of the few three-episode duels we've had in the entire series. So Jack and Yuya are duel, start their duel, and, uh, and Jack goes first and literally opens with the same exact move, you know, Red Wyvern, Red Resonator into Red... In, or, um, uh, red Sprinter to Red Resonator into Red Wyvern and setting a few cards and passing turn. So from there, Yuya uses a few more new Performa Pal monsters that include, I believe, the monster. It was Performa Pal Radish Horse and Time Sword Magician. So Time Sword Magician needs effect, kicks in to bump it up to double attack, and then he uses Radish Horse's effect to try to reduce Red Wyvern. The fortunate part is Jack, as always, has a trap card when Yuya tries to attack with Time Sword Magician that basically allows him to Synchro Summon on his opponent's turn with the Red Wyvern in his graveyard. So he goes for Scarlight, and Yuya's basically put in a predicament, because I think we believe the battle phase was ended, so turn is passed. And in this part of the duel, the, um, the security guy, Roger, tries to interfere by dropping a bunch of security guys with Goyo Emperors. So Jack, kick, Jack kicks in, just gets extremely aggravated, activates a trap card that reduces all the Goyo Emperor's attack, and then he Scarlights the entire field. And Yuya manages to get out of it, but I think we kind of see, you know, how far Jack is willing, <laughs> how far, you know, Jack is just like, Jack's not playing around. <laughs> so, um, in the second part, we see, uh, we do find, we do see to see Yuya Synchro Summon again, which is really nice. We get to see Tuning Magician summoned, and then he summons a new, uh, before, uh, I believe it's a new um, Performer Pal that you can special summon when you take damage. And I forget the full effect, I think. Gekt, um, and it recovers or something like that. And then he Synchro Summons into Enlightenment Paladin and then tries to, and then he, oh yeah, he tributes that form of Paladin to bump up his Enlightenment Paladin and try to get over Scarlight. Jack, again, has a trap card that negates the attack and summons a monster as a tuner. So, I believe, or something along those lines, like Jack seems to always have the answers. So Jack tries to Scarlight Enlightenment Paladin, and I believe Yuya uses a action card to protect, uses both of his Pendulum Monsters and the Pendulum Zone to protect it. So, the unfortunate part of this is that, uh, is that Yuya is put in a predicament where he doesn't know what to do. So, and when he said she said to destroy one of his Pendulums in order to even do this. So, he, then he, much like always, you know, Yuya finds a way to summon some monster out of nowhere, like with Enlightenment Paladin. So he places his um, Yankee Magician in Pelham Zone, and Pelham summons a level 2 monster. And then he tries to Synchro Summon, but then Jack's like, you can't Synchro without a tuner. And then Yuya's like, you can su Synchro Summon a mon this monster with a Pelham Zone Pelham monster. And he reveals Nirvana High Paladin, the cover card from The Dark Illusion. So he actually manages to get out Nirvana High Paladin <laughs> out of nowhere. And he tries to run over uh, Scarlight again, and Paladin doesn't get its attack in. Jack it's, it's a trap card that allows you, that summons a level one monster as a tuner, I believe. I think that this was that point, and um, you get pass his turn back to Jack. So Jack proceeds to summon a level one tuner, and then Synchros double tuning, which we haven't seen this for a while. We get to see, and you get to see a, a cool, if you guys buy these fans out there, you get to see a really cool, um, a Crimson Dragon cameo. He goes for Red Demon's Dragon Tyrant, which was something that I had been saying for a while. I felt that Jack had another monster. We just hadn't seen it yet. Um, and so we find so Tyrant attach, attacks, tries to attack over High Paladin, and as always, you tries to create an action card, but it gets negated. You try you buy Tyrant Dragon's effect, and then his Paladin gets destroyed, but it places itself in the Pendulum Zone. And, and then he, he he tries to attack Yuya, and then he, sum, he summons another Pendulum monster called Acrobat Magician. Jack attacks over it, and it places itself in the Pendulum Zone. The interesting part of this is that I feel like this is kind of like the next evolution of Pendulums. I don't know if we'll see a lot of cards that do this, but I do think in the future we're going to see Pendulums that, rather than going to the extra deck, can place themselves in the Pendulum Zone from the field as well. Which is kind of interesting. I think um, it's definitely going to show how far, it, how much further it is from here. So from there, Yuya proceeds to Pendulum Summon for five. Now, as much as people, you know, complain about Pendulum Summoning and say, "Oh, people don't Pendulum, people spawn me five monsters for free," it, it, 
If someone plays Pelham deck, it rarely happens. Like, it's great if you have the pieces to do so, but if you're going second, unless you open the nuts, you're really not going to be doing that. But, um, or you have to you have a deck that's like heavily built around, you know, destroying monsters in the Pendulum Zone. So, from there, from there you get Pendulum Summons for five and just wins. He uses Enlightenment Paladin's, uh, Nirvana High Paladin's Pendulum effect to uh, continually reduce Tyrant Dragon's effect and actually gets Jack to smile, which is something we don't see very much at all in either 5Ds or Arc 5. But uh, we do get to see that, and from there, Jack actually, he does defeat Jack and win the duel, the, changing the hearts of the entire city, which is something that I didn't think was really possible, but, you know, it proved that point. Um, and, that, and, of course, in a, get through the honorable mentions, um, I believe uh, Yuya versus Michi was a pretty good duel. I just never got, I don't remember quite a lot about it. I know um, Miru versus Yuya was pretty solid. There were a few other duels here and there, but I feel like number one was pretty clear from the get-go. And this was Shun versus Sora Part 1. This episode, I feel like, this duel, I felt like, when I looked at the, all the duels in the series, and I, as good as Jack versus Yuya actually was, this duel kind of set the tone for the entire series. And I think this is what how I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! should be, which is back and forth, back and forth. And that was what this duel really stood out to me. The, this duel had kind of been building up for a while. I felt like there were hints of it, you know, in previous episodes, and it finally got here, which was Shun, which is the mysterious exceed, exceed, exceed monster user, Shun versus Sora. And we find, I feel like this is kind of, one thing that I think that defines this duel is this is kind of where the curtain got pulled back to an extent. We got to find out what was really going on later, a couple episodes later, but this is where the curtain kind of started to get pulled back. A little bit which is, was really nice so I believe I think that the duel started pretty I believe so obviously you know at the beginning of the duel Sora's all cheerful and stuff you know like he normally is and then Shun is just like you know he's party pooper you know he's emo guy he didn't you know he's just like he's just like I so from there you Shun does on the first turn he uses two he summons Vanishing Lanius and summons a Another Vanishing Lanius, I believe. It was a pretty... I think there were a few cards he, he activated, but it was pretty much that. And then from there, uh, and I think um, both players ended their turns, I believe, with two monsters, I think. I think. And uh, so it proceeded... I believe it went to... Um, so Sora's turn, he fusion summons. And of course, Shun, you know, just like is just taken aback because of how much he despises that card. He's probably seen that card... Well, a couple... The card being the victim many people be the victim of that card and carded because of it. So he summons Fright for Bear, attacks um, Shun's Vanishing uh, Lanius, and tries to take it with Fright for Bear's effect. Fortunate part, through, through, throughout this duel, this is one thing you see, Shun has the answers. And he proceeds to activate Raindrafter's return to back, return Vanishing Lanius to his hand. <laughs> and then he proceeds to uh, draw for turn, and of course he draws another Vanishing Lanius and summons Raindrafter, um, I forget the mom of this. I forget the look. Rise Falcon. Just wanna. And from there, he uses Rise Falcon's effect to steal the attack of all of Shun's of Sora's monsters and cut up all of them. Um, I believe that was a scene that might have been edited in the dub. Not really sure, but he proceeds to slice up uh, and, and inflicts quite a bit of damage to Sora throughout this way. So from there, Sora actually go, goes for straws. Uses. Um, Edge of Saw to uh, set up his next fusion summon for Fright and use his fusion conscription to search Fright for Leo. So from there, he's fusion some I believe he activates, I think, Fright for Factory and then fusions for Fright for Leo, which is the Bulkasaurus for the archetype. He, of course, Shun fails, is flying around, and he uses an action card to protect his uh, Rise Falcon. Then he attacks. Um, Sh then Sora attacks uh, uh, Shun's Rise Falcon, and he has a Trap card called adversity to adversity to stop the attack, and of course it's really aggravating uh, Sora at this point. Um, so I believe Sora actually gets an attack. He activates Shun activates Rise Falcon's effect again, and Sora tries to activate an action card to stop it, and then Shun from there stops it with a counter trap, which is something that we've seen. I, I'm glad to see in Arc Five is more counter traps to just to say no to stop shit and. Um, from there, he actually does finally get over. Um, he finally manages to get it off the get uh, to get his uh, Leo off the field. From there, 
Sora uses, a, uses the uh, Sutra Reborn, I think it's the Fluffle Monster Reborn card to bring back his Fluffle Sheep. Then he uses Fright for Factory to summon um, Fright for Sheep, which is another, um, uh, uses, infuses it with Edge of Chain from his hand. So from there, uh, his Sheep gets, does get an attack in, and unfortunately for Shun, it actually does, he does do a good bad damage, but because the attack is ended, Shun can activate his uh, Quick Play spell card, which is... Um, which was, I think, rank up Magic Raptor's Force, ranking up into a Blaze Falcon, which Blaze Falcon doesn't tries to activate its effect to blow up um, Sora's monsters, but uh, unfortunately, you know, Sora has a, a trap card to stop it, but then Shun attacks him directly and then just finally gets the sheep off the field. So Sora kind of just has this, like, really, like, you know, negative, like, just, like, kind of crazy Sora reaction where he fusion summons for Fright for Mad Chimera, which is just like probably, it just looks scary as hell when you first see it. All the kiddos, children start crying and everything. <laughs> and then it does actually get, destroy um, Shun's uh, Blaze Falcon. But from there, it actually, um, but from there, uh, Shun actually uses, and it steals his monster, but then he uses Revolution Force to not only steal his monster back, but rank it up as Revolution Falcon to hit Sora for game. Sora has an action card, but unfortunately, a building falls on top of him. <laughs> so, and that's how it'll end. So, um, I feel like the reason, and then from there we get to see, from there in Arc 5, you get to see the curtain pull back, you get to see, you learn about, you know, the dimensions and all this stuff. I feel like this duel kind of not only, like, it pinpointed what I like about Yu-Gi-Oh!, but on top of that, not only did it pinpoint that, it also really just started to be where we got to see more of what else was going on in the universe of the anime as it goes on. So anyway guys, as always, I know this is a bit of a long, long video today, but I kind of like these kind of longer form discussions. So anyway guys, as always, I thank you guys for watching. This is Warstorm, signing out.